What is the worst movie you've ever seen? No, I'm not talking about Transformers 2 or Grown Ups 2. I mean a movie so bad, so fundamentally broken, that it leaves a pit in your stomach or makes you feel frustrated and angry beyond any reasonable measure. This is a question I've been asking myself for a while, and I think it's about time to do something about it. So I've pulled up the list of the bottom 100 lowest rated movies on IMDb, and I'm going through them one by one to find the worst movie ever. Welcome to the search for the worst. Was that annoying? Irritating? Did it drive you up the wall just a little bit? Well then, the Star Wars Holiday Special is the special for you. Every bad decision or mistake possible was made by this movie. And I guess technically it doesn't even count as a movie, because it's a special holiday thing or whatever. I guess it counts as a TV movie technically, but uh. But it is two hours long pretty much, so I'll make an exception because it deserves the accolades. Listen up, cowboys. This might be the worst thing I've ever seen in the history of my life or anyone else's. At first it kind of glossed over me how atrocious this product is once I finished watching it. You know, it wasn't as boring though as I was expecting or anticipating. I feel like I've seen more boring things before. But now I've let it gestate and ferment inside my brain thinker for a bit. This might be it, folks. This might be the true worst. This might actually be the worst thing in the history of anything ever. This is this is unbelievable. This is un fucking believable. The holiday special is loosely based around a Wookiee holiday known as Life Day. I'm not really sure what the origin or importance of the day is, but I'm also pretty certain that it doesn't make a lick of difference. The real anchor that pulls this movie further down into the depths of appallingness is how, for some reason, it is based around Wookiees. Totally, completely devoted to Wookiees. You know, the furry, giant, yeti-looking creatures who can't speak English, and who are designed around being purposefully non-human beasts who are supposed to be intimidating and scary. And when I say the movie is based around them, I mean it is absolutely obsessed with them. Oh my god. Are you fucking serious? Not only do we see trivial nonsense like the Wookiee mother cooking their Wookiee dinner, but we also see truly bizarre scenes of Wookiees watching what might as well be pornographic material, or unintentionally scary dancing show things. The main thing about this special is that it's a complete incoherent mess. There's no dialogue for the majority of its running time, because it really is just a bunch of animals screaming and clawing at each other, at least until there's an appearance from one of the first movie's cast members, or a bored looking celebrity cameo. They even give Chewbacca a fully fledged family, Marla, his wife, Itchy, who's either his dad or dad-in-law, I don't care, and his son, Lumpy. Great naming conventions, just wonderful. Now, I know this is supposed to be designed for kids and everything, but this movie ruins Wookiees in the same way the prequels completely ruined Yoda. It took something inherently interesting and cool and applied a bunch of unrealistic character traits and other nonsensical nonsense. The Wookiees in this might as well just be very, very hairy humans. They act exactly like humans, but they just can't talk. They have appliances, toys, chairs, and a whole bunch of screens to watch various forms of entertainment on. And take care note of that last part, because not only is it really, really stupid, but it's actually imperative to the running time of whatever the hell this thing is. Oh, they're entertainment. They're entertainment mad, these Wookiees. George Lucas, as the creator of Star Wars, said himself, and these are his exact words, If I had the time and a sledgehammer, I would track down every copy of that show and smash it. Now, doesn't something seem kind of fishy about that? Surely he had to sign off on something. He must have at least known about it. And he probably could have stopped it if he cared enough. But anyway, so what takes up the majority of the running time? Well, that's a very good question. Despite it being two hours long, it's one of those experiences that you remember taking a hell of a long time to be over, but at the same time, you can't remember anything specific about it. The first scene of note is a truly strange dance sequence that takes place on what looks like a carbon copy of the hologram game from A New Hope. When I was watching the special, I took it upon myself to record my genuine first reaction to it, which I'll hopefully do for all movies in the search for the worst from now on. It might help to convey a more genuine level of emotion instead of trying to replicate it later. The whole dancing thing isn't particularly impressive or memorable, but what is memorable it's the truly terrifying music. Okay, I can deal with the actual thing, what's, uh, what's happening right now, but it's the music that's freaking me out. Okay, maybe not, maybe not, not at all. 
The main problem with all the scenes in this movie is not only that they're super boring, but nothing happens. Each one of them can be described in one sentence, thus proving how pointless they really are. For some reason we see Luke repairing some thingamabob, and he's all like, oh I hope Han and Chewie get back in time for life day or something. By the way, the reason he looks so weird is because prior to filming this, like a few weeks before, Mark Hamill was in a particularly nasty car accident, resulting in some pretty substantial facial reconstructive surgery. Anyway, here's the cooking scene I mentioned earlier. It's fucking shite. I can't believe I'm watching a cooking show in a Star Wars holiday special. Hey look, it's disinterested Han Solo and Chewbacca flying around in the best ship ever. Shame it's all reused clips from A New Hope. And oh lordy Harrison Ford was not in the mood to be filming this shit. Not only does he look like he doesn't give a fuck, but he's even been credited as being immensely reluctant to feature in it in the first place. I wonder why. He just doesn't care. It's so awesome, he doesn't give a fuck. He's he's probably just literally reading the lines off whatever's in front of him. This old dude keeps showing up at the Wookiee house for comedic effect, and it's not very funny. The end. Although he does give Itchy a special tape thing for his own personal Oculus Rift, to watch erotic musical numbers that are based on whatever the machine takes from your own wildest fantasies. Yeah, yeah, because movie whatever. This musical number is even more forced and boring than whatever happened before that I've already forgotten. <coughs> Remember folks, this is in a Star Wars holiday special. <laughs> Eventually some Imperial dudes appear at the Chewbacca household. They want to fully investigate to make sure they have no involvement in the Rebel Alliance. The really funny old guy takes the opportunity to sit one of the dudes down and show him, you fucking guessed it, another musical number. This one isn't quite as bad, but it still has nothing to do with Star Wars. Next up is the only half decent, oh, no I guess it's quarter decent. No, no that's not right, eighth decent. No, I suppose it's more the 16th decent thing to crop itself up from this fucking abomination. And that's this very unusual animated segment. I think I mostly enjoyed it because it was so stylistically different to the rest of the garbage in this special. And also this. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> what? What happened? The animation is all over the place, it really is a clusterfuck of random ideas and other laughable scenes. While the idiot kid Wookiee is being all meta and watching the animation that we're watching, a couple of stormtroopers take it upon themselves to smash up the kid's room and break all his stuff. Which leads to the next scene of note, a fake tutorial advert thing, where this old guy pretends to be a robot. I, th I think. They keep doing this effect where he's supposed to be glitching out or something. It's very confusing, and it's certainly not entertaining or funny. Now let's get started, shall we? What? <laughs> Next up is my least favourite scene in the entire thing. The Mos Eisley Cantina romantic subplot with another musical number. Surprised? Yeah, me neither. We don't know who anyone is, and they kind of expect you to just care about this guy who has a mini volcano on his head that he drinks with? What if a bird was flying over and it took a shit and it landed in the hole? Would that mean that you just drank shit? What possible evolutionary advantage would this have? So stupid. So stupid. It's not Star Wars. <laughs> what is this? Chewie and Harrison Ford finally show up at the house and kill a stormtrooper who was just doing his job. Chewie awkwardly reunites with his family, then they all grab an orb and hold it into the air. Whatever that means. They then dress in red robes and fly through space. Look, I know they're not really flying through space, but it sure damn looks like they are. And uh, why? I, I don't even care. All of your favourite characters from the Star Wars franchise show up to finish the ceremony that does something maybe I don't know. Then Carrie Fisher sings a song to the Star Wars theme. <laughs> There's a montage of random clips from A New Hope, then the movie ends. See, I, I guess that wasn't so painful. Well that's because you didn't have to watch the whole thing. Each scene goes on far too long and I'm pretty certain that no kid would find this entertaining. Even if they were a huge Star Wars fan. It's so bloated and lacks any sort of guidance that it's completely maddening. But I do have to admit, it is fascinatingly maddening. I would never tell anyone to watch this, like ever. I'd never say that you should waste the time. But if you're a huge Star Wars bitch or just curious, I guess it would be slightly better than having a large bird claw your eyes out. And you have permission to put that on the box, LucasArts. So where does it stand on the search for the worst list. Now this is tough because while it is boring and the worst thing ever, I still don't think it's as awful as Birdemic 2. When we get to this level of comparison, we have to start to think about its level of competency as a film. And while the holiday special sucks, it sucks fat cocks, it actually does have editing and the camera at least points at the things it's recording. The same cannot be said for Birdemic 2. It's also less boring than the Yugi loves. I don't need to justify any further to you, leave me alone. And up next for the search for the worst is... Interesting. This sounds absolutely gripping. That's sarcasm, by the way.
I've done it. I've, I've finally seen it. I've sat all the way through the infamous Star Wars Holiday Special. Now, what do you think? Did it look as bad as I thought it was? Do you think it deserves the place it got on the list? Tell me what you think in the comments below. Hey, and check out the complimentary video that goes with this one. It's an edited down version of my genuine first reaction to watching this craziness. It's quite a long video, so you're gonna have to stick with it, but hopefully it'll be entertaining, I don't know. I'm hoping to do it for every search and the worst flick I do in the future, as long as people like it and stuff. Anyway, so as always, thanks for watching or comments and ratings are very much appreciated. Make sure you check out my other channel, Jar Media, and the Search for the Worst playlist for more. I'll see you next time. Bye!